So, QT pass. Let's first start with passwords and password managers. Passwords suck. Like, as it says on my laptop, fuck passwords. Seriously, fuck them. But unfortunately, we are still stuck with passwords, lots and lots of passwords, especially if you work for a web company um, with lots of different clients and shit. You've got this tree structure of folders with projects like designs and shit in there. And usually there's also a dot password file or something with all the credentials for, for example, um, the connected Facebook account or whatever. You don't want those. Um, we don't want those. Um, at a couple of previous companies I worked, we had such folder structures, mostly even on a Samba share or something terrible. Um, we wanted to change that, and for the developers it was easy. We uh, thought, there's an open source solution for that. It's called PASS, the standard Unix password manager. And it works really nice. It just You get a tree structure of uh, folders with files, so you can go pass, uh, projects, uh, whatever company name, uh, site, etc. Put the, files in, uh, the passwords in there. Works in the command line. It uses uh, just a bit of bash, git, tree, gpg, and that's it. It encrypts the passwords with gpg. Um, and also multi-recipient, so you can share your passwords with your group. Uh, you're not stuck, like in KeePass, with a, a single master password for the whole tree structure, because, well, every folder can have separate stuff. It's really nice, but then we got a problem, managers. <laughs> Even if you make it easy like this, managers can't use terminals, or at least they claim that they can't use terminals. So I was thinking, oh, what the fuck, what do we do? So I came up um, with two nights of work. I made a very simple uh, read-only implementation of a GUI for it. And the Beamer is a bit shite for this, but um, <coughs> it's the same, just this tree structure. And this is read-only. The add and uh, edit buttons weren't there at the start. Um, and you can just read the passwords. And the managers seem to like that a lot. So after two nights of work, I thought, yeah, well, that's fun. Let's put it on GitHub. Did a short hackathon, did a couple of translations for it, that kind of stuff. And, well, that was nice, but then it got popular. <coughs> We've now got over 190 stars uh, on GitHub, and lots of people uh, contributing, like 30-ish. Uh, so, all of a sudden, um, I was kind of done with it, but at Easter, I got a pull request from someone, um, putting the edit and add functionality in there, and then we got talking, like, okay, so what's missing and what is not very handy with Boss, and that's the user management. Every folder, uh, you can have, um, for every folder, you can set the recipients, so who can uh, uh, decrypt these files. It uses Git, uh, GPG, so it uses uh, multi-recipient encryption. So everybody in that list can decrypt, but the list is pretty cryptical. There's no nice interface for it. It's just a text file with GPG IDs. So that's really sucky. And we thought up a nice interface. Hey, a list, and look who's there, Breno. Oh. <laughs> I have your GPG, so I can encrypt for you. Uh, well, no, I can't, because I haven't trusted him. So that's what the gray color says. Only the blue ones are um, usable. You have to trust them. Uh, the GPG trust model doesn't allow you to encrypt to people you don't trust, which kind of makes sense. Um, we added a lot of other options and recently templating. <laughs> so people can even easier, uh, make even easier use of it, also with editing. Um, and that was nice. Uh, and then uh, the, the, yeah, the enthusiasm of people really helped me to put some more effort in it. Um, one day I was waiting for uh, the ferry in Amsterdam and someone sent me a, a, an issue. <coughs> so they wanted to clear the password display after some time. And while on the ferry, I explained to him how to do that. <laughs> and the next morning I got a pull request. He implemented it, <laughs> so that was nice. Um, recently, someone uh, also sent a pull request, and after a bit of work, it was merged, for using icons on the buttons. 
and not just icons, but system-dependent icons. That's what it looks like in KDE. That's what it looks like in GNOME. And that's what it looks like in a dark KDE theme. <laughs> Ooh. But yeah, that doesn't work on Windows, unfortunately, um, which I don't have a slide for. So we had to add uh, SVG icons and a lot of stuff. But recently, we've also got some other news. And that is, huh? we're in Debian testing currently. So that's pretty nice. <laughs> And um, so, yeah, in the next release of Debian, Ubuntu, you name it, Mint, uh, it's just upget install. In uh, Arch Linux, there is a Packer, uh, an R build for it, uh, two actually, one from the Git uh, and a, a one of the versions, versioned versions. So that's pretty useful. Um, well, for more information, go to github or go to qtpass.org any questions <laughs> how did you get into the debian uh, were you selected or did you apply for it uh or did no you buy? <laughs> it, <laughs> it's it's even worse uh, we did a release party for the 1.0 release and during that party a friend uh, of mine brought his wife who is chinese she did the chinese translation for qtpass and a Chinese uh, rich person, benefactor of uh, Debian, uh, asked for QtPass to be included and <laughs> found, an <laughs> found a, um, uh, what do you call, a maintainer for it. <laughs> so that was pretty nice, yeah. It's like really a cooperative thing. Uh, also, anybody doing an open source project, I can advise to just take an arbitrary date and do a release, like a 1.0 release. For us, it was pretty easy because um, August 1st, 2014, I sent an email of the alpha version to the mailing list of password store, so pass. Um, and then I thought, well, since we're going good, why not just take August 1st, 2015 as a 1.0 date? And so for the 2.0 release, I know the date. That's going to be August 1st this year. <laughs> Any other questions? Yeah? The first version, did that also work with uh, GPG or just uh, files? Uh, it worked with uh, GPG, of course. Uh, it, it because, okay. well, PASS works with GPG and it was just a reader for a read-only version for managers to be able to read our passwords we as uh, developers put in there. Ah, okay. Ah, nice. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yes. Uh, how do you explain to managers how GPG works or how do you let them create their keys? Because I think that's still a bit of a problem. Well, this is a nice solution if you have a key, but also for email and to other extents. Um yes, unfortunately, I don't have a screenshot of it, but the first start, I can now look it up after uh, this. Sure. But uh, when you first start QtPass uh, and you don't have a GPG priv key, it will open a, a short uh, wizardy thing which allows you to enter your name and your email and press OK and have a spinner for like five minutes uh, <laughs> while it generates your key and then that is it. Then you can use that and the nice thing because they enter their work email of course, uh, if you set up uh, GPG tools for example on Mac or um, a GPG on Linux or on Windows or whatever, it will automatically encrypt uh, emails for people you have a private key for and sign for all the rest. Well, like magic. <laughs> nice. So that works. We got all the managers sending encrypted emails without them knowing. <laughs> wow. Nice. <laughs> now, so now that was a nice benefit. Yeah. Now it's just not letting them lose the keys on a reinstall or anything like that. But uh, yeah. you, you, you got a long way. Yes. Thank you for yes. that. Yes, Rolf. <laughs> Hi. Um, I once started to, to use Qt Pass or try to use Pass mm -hmm. first, and um, but what what I what I saw was that 
uh, you, you order everything in a folder structure, mm -hmm. and in the end, everybody uh, can see your, your passwords, but they can see what size or how you structure your stuff. So if you have like 20 porn sites, for example, yep. then uh, everybody can see what Everybody who has access to your laptop, so your browser history anyway, etc., can see your project. Yes. That's true. Also, please don't put it on a public Git server, but a private Git server, like you do with all your projects, etc. Uh, probably. <laughs> of course, but if somebody mm -hmm. has access to it, it doesn't even have to have my password, it can still see the, 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 list. Tree st the list of clients, the list of projects, yeah, so they know where yep. to look for your uh, accounts. Yes, uh, there's a lot of discussion on the password store mailing list about this, mm -hmm. and it is decided that it will completely break the whole idea of pass to uh, decrypt or encrypt the tree structure or whatever. Um, it would make it monolithic instead of uh, easily versionable, etc. It's just not worth the effort to try and obfuscate the, the tree structure because why would you? <laughs> and you lose the tab completion on the command line. Also, yes, because it really is a very simple set of bash scripts, uh, the, the main uh, pass executable. People are working on that. There's a project called PW, which is the very simplified version of PASS, and it's. I think they're thinking of implementing something like that with a just yeah random numbered or, or hashed uh, tree structure with a file, which you then have to uh, encrypt for everybody who can use the tree, which is also hard to figure out because per folder you can have different users, and that tree needs to be decryptable by everybody. So, yeah, it has a lot of downsides. Okay, any more questions? Well, thank you for your time.